Hello, my name is Chris Bridgen and this is Reza Afshar and today is part 15 of why Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people. Now in part 14 we heard a list of the priests and Levites who returned in the 6th century BC under Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest to rebuild the second temple of God. And we also heard the lineage of Joshua the high priest. So now we come to Nehemiah chapter 12 verses 12 to 47 and this begins with in the days of Joachim. Now Joachim is mentioned because he is the son of Joshua the high priest and therefore the next high priest himself and leader of the priests. In the days of Joachim these were the heads of the priestly families of Sarai's family, Moriah, of Jeremiah's, Hananiah, of Ezra's, Meshulam, of Amariah's, Jehonanan, of Maluk's, Jonathan, of Shechaniah's, Joseph, of Harim's, Adnas, of Mirmoth's, Helkai, of Ido's, Zechariah, of Ginnathon's, Meshulam, of Abijah's, Zikri, Minayamim's, and of Moadiah's, Piltai, of Bilgah's, Shamua, of Shemaiah's, Jehonathan, of Joyrib's, Matanai, of Jedai's, Uzai, of Salu's, Kalai, of Amok's, Eber, of Hilkiah's, Hash Hashabiah, and of Jedai's, Nathaniel. The family heads of the Levites in the days of Elishib and Joyada, Johanan and Jadua, the high priests, as well as those of the priests, were recorded in the reign of Darius the Persian. The family heads among the descendants of Levi up to the time of Jehonan, Jehonanan, son of Eliashib, were recorded in the book of the Annals. And the leaders of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, son of Kadmiel, and their associates who stood opposite them to give praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other, as prescribed by David, the man of God. Mataniah, Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talmon and Akub were gatekeepers who guarded the storerooms at the gates. They served in the days of Joachim, son of Joshua, the son of Josedak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The musicians also were brought together from the region around Jerusalem, from the villages of the Notophophites, from Beth Gilgal, and from the area of Geba and Asmaveth. For the musicians had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people, the gates and the wall. I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right, towards the dung gate. Hoshaiah and half the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, as well as some priests with trumpets, and also Zechariah, son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachur, the son of Asaph, and his associates, Shemaiah, Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, Maai, Nethanel, Judah, and Hanani, with musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra, the teacher of the law, led the procession. At the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David on the ascent to the wall, and passed above the site of David's palace to the water gate on the east. The second choir proceeded in the opposite direction. I followed them on top of the wall together with half the people, 
past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, over the gate of Ephraim, the Jeshana gate, the fish gate, the tower of Hananel, and the tower of the hundred as far as the sheep gate. At the gate of the guard they stopped. The two choirs that gave thanks and took their places in the house of God, so did I, together with half the officials, as well as the priests, Eliakim, Messiah, Mininamim, Micaiah, El Elionani, Zechariah and Hananiah with their trumpets, and also Messiah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzai, Jehonanan, Malchijah, Elam and Ezer. The choir sang under the direction of Jezrahiah and on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. And the sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for their contributions, for the contributions, first fruits and tithes. From the fields around the towns, they were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites. For Judah was pleased with the ministering priests and Levites. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did also the musicians and gatekeepers, according to the commands of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there had been directors for the musicians and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. So, in the days of Zerubbabel and of Nehemiah, all Israel contributed the daily portions for the musicians and the gatekeepers. They also set aside the portion for the other Levites, and the Levites set aside the portion for the descendants of Aaron. So the reading finishes there. And this was a major celebration, the dedicating of the walls of Jerusalem. The Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate. The priests and Levites purified themselves ceremonially. They purified the people, the gates and the wall. Two choirs were then assigned to give thanks, and the two groups of people ascended the stairs to the walls of Jerusalem, and each group went around the walls in the opposite direction, where they gave thanks. We can see from the image that the walls were large. The two choirs that gave thanks then took their places in the house of God, or God's temple, where they sang. The scripture also tells us that on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. And the women and children also rejoiced, and the sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. All was now completed. Nehemiah had done his job. But it wouldn't be long before the Jewish people started to backslide. So please look out for the final part of the story, part 16 in a week's time. And it's Nehemiah chapter 13. And as always, please forward this or part one of why Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people on to anyone that you think would be interested in hearing about the history of Israel and the Jewish people. Well, thank you for watching. Take care. God bless. The Lord Jesus wants you to come to him, just as you are. He wants you to come to him no matter what you have done in your life, no matter what mistakes you have made. He is kind, understanding and always forgiving. He cares very much about each one of us. Maybe you are unsure if you really have given your heart fully to the Lord Jesus. Maybe you would like to say yes to him for the very first time. Or maybe you would like to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus and start afresh today. The Bible says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. 
The Bible also says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you'd like to hand your life to the Lord Jesus and put your hope and trust in him, then please repeat this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, please hear my prayer. I know you gave your life for me and I know that you are alive today. Please forgive my sins. Come into my heart and make your home with me. Thank you for being my Lord and Saviour. Amen.